I've said it before this season, but where do we even start this week? A total horror show from QPR against Hull. We'll be looking ahead to the clash with Huddersfield shortly, but first we have to dissect that shambles from last Saturday. The 3-0 defeat, and it could and perhaps should have been worse. Hull had their cue on the rack long before the end, and thank God they did, Dave, because it was embarrassing enough as it was. Yeah, it was a, oh, oh, just an awful performance, wasn't it? From the start, just so passive and slow to start with, like just turning up thinking like they're Real Madrid. It's like, come on, you know, yeah. You need to start the game with a bit of urgency and a bit of fight. It was just so poor. And they just kept getting that first goal. I mean, they, they gave the ball away twice, I think, in the build up. Um, Kenneth Powell's attempt at a tackle. I mean, blimey, that was pathetic, wasn't it? And then there's three of them on the floor while the guy shoots. It's like, come on, what, what are you doing? It's not a Sunday morning team here. A few professional footballers. It was so poor. And then you look at the second half goals, they're playing a high line with two of the slowest centre halves in the league, with like a really quick gets a really quick forward and your full backs playing five yards behind you. What what are you doing? It's like there's no communication. Oh, it's just I mean, how long you got? It was awful, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, I mean I haven't even started on the attack yet. I mean it's just such a I mean, I didn't think it could get much worse. I thought Fleetwood was rock bottom. I was wrong. <laughs> this is worse. And God, there's still like three months left, isn't there? It's yeah, it's not um not good, is it? No, there's that image, isn't there, of the second goal where Kaka is like five or six yeah. yards behind everyone else with his hand in the air and Conley's just stood it, literally in line with the centre of the goal. I mean, it's beyond belief, like you're saying. It, it it was just such a bad one. And it's the third time in the eight league games since we came back after the World Cup <laughs> we've lost 3-0. Obviously, we did it against Burnley and Luton. And on this show, every week we keep thinking, this will be the turning point, this will be the turning point. But we keep losing so heavily and the performances are getting worse. It's not really a case now, I think, of hoping we get back to normal. It feels like there's a lot more to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, Burnley and Luton, you can lose 3 0 to. Burnley are going to win this league, and they? Luton are a good side. Hull are all right, but you shouldn't be losing 3 0 and them just giving up after an hour. I mean, it could have been five or six, really. I mean, it's just really poor. And it, you know, it's hard to know where, where we are. Where are we had a good two month spell earlier in the season where we went top and we looked a really good side and we were we we were beating some very good sides in this league. But apart from that this year, we've just been so average to poor. But it's, you know, and it he said this, this isn't like a two or three weeks. This has been going on for like two, three months now. You know, it's no there's no sign of it getting better. Um and, and they, they need to pull their finger out because, you know, we keep joking about, oh, you know, maybe relegation but we're quite a way off it but we're not that far off it and there's a look there's even though it's like february we're still quite early in the season because you had the world cup break there's a long way to go we need to start you know pulling our finger out uh, yeah you're right i mean the, the relegation stuff it's one of those where now we're going to look silly in a few months if we're saying we're not in any danger and all of a sudden it's danger zone and we're like three points outside and it could turn around quickly this month alone there's five matches so yeah. It can change quickly. Hopefully, we can still start heading up the other direction, but it just feels a million miles away right now. And it's another away trip this week as we head up to Huddersfield. And it's not good stats in the head-to-head for this one either. Just one win in the last 10 against Huddersfield for QPR. And we've not won at Huddersfield now since 2015. And then when you look at the form table, obviously over six games, we're 22nd. Over 10 games, we're 22nd. So even though the form table shows us below... It's below Huddersfield. They might be third bottom, but we're the team who's struggling. You'd have to say they come in as favourites, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, they're not a great side. I mean, they had a really good season last year. They've struggled this year, but they've already beaten us once. They beat us at our place, didn't they? And they didn't have to play that well to beat us that night. Um, Yeah, a a really tough game. If we play like we did last week, we ain't beating anyone. You know, we we sort of, we've lost the league one side. we're not. I don't care how good or bad you're in the league. We, we're not going to beat them. We, our performance needs to go up a million times from what we saw last week to have any chance. Um, and it's a it's a massive game, you know. They're they're quite way below us in the league. You know, if, if we lose this one, it's going to be panic stations. And you can imagine there'll be, you know, the next home game is not going to be the prettiest, is it? Because you're going to have a lot of angry supporters, and you know, we're in a lot of trouble. A win changes everything, and they need to get one. 
Yeah, and you're right there as well. We're talking about the form and the league table. Huddersfield are the team who are 12 points below us, so straight away we'd be giving three points to them. Then it's down to nine points. You only need that same set of results the week after. It could be down to six points. And mm. um, with QPR, it's just it's not just the performances. It's what you said before, though. It's the lack of goals, isn't it? And we're actually starting to verge on some unwanted history because it's already only six goals in the last 13 league games, which is our worst spell for 16 years. If we don't score in this match this weekend, I don't even want to tell you what the stat will be next week for how bad our goal scoring run will be. Any answers why we're struggling quite so much? Because it is now almost like a once in a generation bad spell of in front of goal. And on top of that, obviously now maybe even Lyndon Dykes, he might be out medium to long term, depending mm-hmm. how he's struggling. Any answers? We're just, we're just so slow on the ball. We saw when we were scoring goals earlier in the season and last year as well. That, you know, we played fast play in the opposition's half, trying to get in behind and putting crosses in. We're just so slow with everything. We're ponderous. We're letting the other team get behind the ball. When we played red in the other week, second half, we were quick with the ball. We were getting men in the box. We were having shots. We scored two. We could have scored about five that second half, but we don't do that often enough. And you know, and you're giving teams a one goal lead. It's it's we're easy to defend against when we do that. And we're just very, the whole team's very one paced. The, the difference last week when Armstrong come on was incredible. Someone just running at them with a bit of pace. It's like, oh, blind me. Suddenly they had to defend very differently. I mean, they've done it pretty easily, but you know, at least they give them something to think about. Um, it's 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 worrying because you can't see where the goals are coming from. You would expect it to be Willock and Chair, but. They're not playing well, are they, at the moment? No, we just don't seem to be creating much from open play. And the only chance we really had against Hull was the dicky header, wasn't it, from a set piece. If that doesn't go for us, we just don't look like scoring at all. And when you come to chair, he just starts to try too hard. We've said it before, when the, when the going gets tough, he, he drops too deep, he tries too much and doesn't choose the right passes. When everything clicks for them, they're fantastic, aren't they? But when it's going as it is at the moment and the confidence drains away, we just look like we've got no goals in the team. And then that's just the goal score. And then we've got the actual performance levels. And you said yourself on Twitter straight after the whole game, there seems to be no personal pride in the performances at the moment. And it's not what you want to see from any QPR side. If you're going to spend your money and go to Hull, you just want to see maximum effort than playing for the badge. But we're getting almost now the complete opposite from pretty much everyone in the team, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, it's, it just seems incredible to me. I, I, I get, you know, we always say like, do it for the shirt, do it for the club, do it for the fans, that sort of thing. But Ultimately, you're a professional. You've got to do it for yourself. You've been playing football since you're like five years old. You've got yourself to a championship club. All right, you might think, oh, I should be playing in the Premier League or whatever. But do something to get there. Say, this is my level. I'm going to play at this every week and prove how good I am. If the rest of the team let me down, that's their problem. But you, you, they sort your own performance out. Not enough of them are doing it. They're just dropping below. And there's so much blaming each other, uh, finger pointing at each other. Oh, you know, pass the ball. I need the ball exactly to me. I can't run on to something. It's like, you know, come on. It's, you know, it's it's not it's not good enough. It's nowhere near good enough. Um, I find it incredible that this is the same team that went top in October and that we were so full of um, enthusiasm and excitement about what they were going to do this season. And it's the same team. There's no one's gone, really, have they, from the first team. And look at them now. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I can't believe it's the same season that we're t- having these yeah. shows in. It's it's madness. And even the likes of Sam Field were putting in like half arse challenges. And yeah. like we was mentioned, that Ilias Che had his head down. I've never seen him look so kind of disinterested in the second half. That to me is what is massively alarming because the players you can at least, use, at least usually rely on to be given the ball, it doesn't even feel like they are. JR Perry on our forum put up a fantastic post that he doesn't feel like losing hurts our players enough. And I, I agree with him. And I think you can see that difference compared to other sides. Other sides do not want to lose that game of football. Our players just doesn't seem to be the same. It's something that changed the other year. When um, we had a the lockdown season, we were poor the first half of the season. And they brought Austin and Johansson in. And what those two did was they raised standards. Like, we are here to win every game. We're going to make the playoffs this season, even though that was a massive long shot when they come in. That was the standards they set. You know, you don't drop below this. We're going to try and win every game possible. And there isn't that attitude there at the moment. I don't know if it will return when Johansson comes back in, but he's there. He's in the dressing room. He's not like on another planet. He's, he's in the door. He, he's just, you know, it's, it's, it's got to come from the players. You know, it's easy to blame the managers, the owners, whoever you want to blame. 
at the end of the day, three o'clock on a Saturday, it's down to the players when they cross that line. And if they're not bothering, we're not going to get very far. Yeah, I think Cripsy knows that too, doesn't he? As well, he was livid as he should have been after Hull. And QPR fans have praised his honesty. But, and it is a bit of a big but for me, he was literally saying the same things after Fleetwood. If you go back and watch his post Fleetwood interview, it's almost a carbon copy in terms of the sound bites and his tone, which I'm, for me, it kind of suggests he doesn't really have the answers to get us out of the situation because he had three weeks between those matches and it was the same thing and he was angry at the same thing. Is it now, do you expect some big changes though because of how bad we were at Hull from the manager or is he just going to have to stick with what he's trying to do? I don't know how big changes you can make with the injuries and everything they've got. Well, I mean, you look at, I mean, I mean, his Powell went off injured or Roberts went off injured. You don't know if they're going to be out. Dykes has obviously been in hospital. We don't know how long he's out for. Well, I mean, there's not, unless you change the system or bring in a couple of like B team players, I can't see what major changes you can make. I mean, tactically, I don't quite agree with how he's setting up. I, I think you need an extra man in central midfield. I think we, you know, we're too easy to play through there. We've got to make ourselves a bit harder to beat. But um, personally, I'd like to see him go to a back three. But I don't think we've got enough centre halves and full backs to do that now. If you no. have Leeds out as well, so I can't see what big changes he can make. It's got to be attitude rather than changing like players and tactics, really. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we can't probably go, like you said, to the three at the back because Clark Salter now, you'd assume, is going to have to play at left back. And I don't think he looked particularly yeah. comfortable out there. No. Then we've maybe even got, like you're saying, no dykes. So it feels like the team's going to be disjointed at a time when it can't really afford to be. Hopefully you can think of stuff, something that you can change because just sticking with this same idea at the moment isn't working at all. Obviously now the transfer window's closed as well. We knew QPR wouldn't be making any moves. Our loan spots were full. We have no cash to splash. But the, the likes of Bond, Thomas, Masters and Hamelion have been shipped out. Does that at least suggest now that there's an acknowledgement within the hierarchy that we're what we have beneath the first team isn't good enough? Yeah, I mean, it, it does look that way, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, maybe with those going, it's going to give some of these guys from the B team an opportunity to get on the bench a bit more, and they'll be the backup players. You know, I mean, they've won a few games recently. I won't pretend to know anything about the under under eighteens and the B team, but you know, potentially they're going to come in, but. It's a shame. They come in with a lot of promise, some of those. I mean, it just hasn't really worked out. Masterson looked quite promising when he first came in, didn't he? But that's like three, four years ago now. You know, he's not really kicked on, has he? Um, George Thomas had a lot of injuries and didn't really look good enough. Um, so I'm not really surprised they've gone. Um, yeah, I, that, that's always been our, our problem for a couple of years. Those backup players are not quite good enough. So our first 11 is a decent side. Take a few out and we're in trouble. And that's where we are at the minute. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do now with the season kind of petering out, whether we do play some of these, like you say, B team players or the under 18 players. Because last season there was that thing that Warburton was like being stubborn and wouldn't give any of them a chance. Whereas this season we're not really seeing that many more of them. Will they now get given a chance now that that second layer of players has whittled away a little bit? Who knows? Maybe they'll have to wait until the summer to fix it. But... Prediction time for Huddersfield then. Will we get the points on Saturday, do you think? Will we even put the ball in the net? That's probably the more pertinent question. I think nil-nil. <laughs> I think no, I think I think a draw, I think it'd be a draw weekend. I mean it'd be a, a tight draw. Um I just I just want to see a much better performance. I'm just fed up of how they're playing at the minute. You know, I just want to see a bit of a positive performance. You know, they they done it for a, a half against Reading for a, an hour or so against Swansea. They can do it. But they, they need to put it together for a whole game. They need to do it soon. That you look at the games coming up, that they're not gonna they're not getting easier. Do you know what though? It shows you how the season's gone away, the fact that now we're seeing like maybe a nil nil draw at Huddersfield away as a good result. Whereas early in the season yeah. we'd have been hoping for the win here, wouldn't we? You think, yeah. For me, I, I was sadly right last week. I said said Hull, I didn't like our chances against their attack and Connolly, and that so that proved. And this week it's almost the same. I just think Huddersfield they're in better form than us. We just can't score. And we're talking there about having a disjointed team. I can't see where the goals are coming from. Too many players lacking in confidence, sadly. And I think we're going to be sat here <laughs> another dissection of a performance next week. <laughs> there you go. On that note again, thank you for watching. And hopefully we'll have better, more positive vibes next week. We've got two home games to look forward to then. The matches start to come thick and fast again. Our first midweek match in a while as we face Sunderland after Millwall. 
Join us for that and come on your ours. We you know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.